This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 576 uh, with guest Gavin Campbell, recorded on July 6th, 2023. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way in your home and some that are outside of your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the Average Guy TV studios here in a beautiful tonight, 75 Fahrenheit. Outside, it's beautiful, Gavin, where you're at. Are you guys doing okay? I know it's smoky, but how's the how's the weather in your area? Tell us again where you're at. Oh, I'm in Pickering, Ontario, just just east of Toronto. So I'm just on the suburbs of Toronto. But um, these last two days have been extremely hot. You're looking at like 30, 32 mm. degrees Celsius. Yeah. Um, and a few weeks ago, you mentioned the smoke, but a few weeks ago, it was really smoky. So the smoke coming over from Quebec hit us and you just look outside and all you saw was smoke and it just smelt like campfires everywhere. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. it, oh, it, it's so something bad. to laugh about, but it's no. like, it was really, the air was bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. couple couple summers for the last couple summers, California has like been burning down. Right. And it's been burning towns. And is that the, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's full news here when it happens in the United States. It seems like most of Canada is on fire and we're talking about it. We, you know, the air quality is bad, but it doesn't seem to be getting, is this so remote that it's just not really affecting people or, or is, or have there been damage to property? And is that same thing kind of happening with the fires up there? Oh no, there's been a lot of property damage. I have coworkers yeah. living in Halifax. They've, they, they've lost houses and stuff uh, like okay. that, right? Or yeah. they they were given like five minutes notice, get out now, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it it's yeah. really affected yeah. a lot of people. And I think this is some of the worst fires we've had in many years. Yeah. Um, the smoke actually made its way across to Europe and was hitting Portugal and stuff. Wow. Um, it was being carried over there. So that just shows how much it's still yeah. burning. Yeah. Um, but it's just not as bad right now. I use the my radar app and it has a it has a feature you can turn on uh, a fire indicator and it'll put a little it'll put a little stamp and as I <laughs> as I zoom out I mean I just I feel I feel bad for you guys up there as I zoom out it's solid fire icons across the whole thing and so okay well yeah nothing to laugh about and and certainly for those folks that are losing property losing their livelihood losing their homes uh, we feel and 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 well, my phone's spying on or my watch is spying on me as well. <laughs> uh, uh, wish wish well for everything that's going on up there. It's still not that that news. I mean, it's it's crazy when it's California. That's all we hear about when it's Canada. We it's just not making just not making regular news. So, but we're covering it here on Home Gadget Geeks. We're also covering gadgets. So let's get to that. Um, as well, a couple things in the meantime, big thanks to Nathaniel Lindley, who joined me last week, actually two weeks ago, I was on vacation last week, and uh, and kind of caught us up to date, and we, we talked a little bit about what's going on in school, and then kind of caught up with an outdoor patio project he was working on. If you haven't listened to it, go back 575. Big thanks to our Patreon subscribers as well. If you're finding value in the podcast and you want to give back, I got some room on the Patreon team. So if you want to join us over there, theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon. Oh, you heard from him already, but Gavin Campbell is here from HomeTech.fm. And Gavin, always great to have you on. Welcome back. Oh, thanks for the invite. When I saw your email come through, I was like, oh, yes, I have a lot to talk about. <laughs> you know, like yeah. <laughs> I saved up a bunch of things. That's awesome. You're you're like a quarterly guy now. I have you on probably about once a quarter and uh, and trying to get you in uh, for for all the updates. Give us a quick update on what's going on at HomeTech.fm. I know uh, I, you you made them crunch the recording today because yeah. you were recording that right before the show here. So I, I apologize to those guys for that. But how are things going on over there? What 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 do you guys give me? Give me some recent topics. Maybe you guys have been covering over there. HomeTech.fm. 
Oh, one of the most things we have, like every week we talk about what's new in Matter. It seems like every week some device comes along and mm. adds Matter support. And we're going to get into that a little that. But, you know, we talk about that. We talk about a lot of the projects we're doing, we're working on. And between the three of us, Seth and TJ, we all have projects we're constantly working on. Um, so we get into some of those and give people ideas, answer some questions, and then hit the news. So it's a lot, you know, it's about an hour every week, you know, the show is, and we cover a lot of different topics from the pro space down to the regular do-it-yourself space. Yeah. If you haven't subscribed to it, check out Home Tech. Uh, just search for that in your favorite podcast app or head out to hometech.fm. Love what you guys are doing over there. And, and if you're a listener here, you're definitely going to like what's going on over there and you might want to uh, to pick that up. Okay. Before we get into lawn sensors, I'm super excited about that topic, by the way. I know people are like, oh, come on, Jim. It's like toothbrushes. No, you're going to like, I am super excited about this lawn sensor. I want to get the meter because you, you picked up a meter, like, and it, you say it's changing your barbecue game. Give us, give us the story behind that. So I first heard about meter actually through you. You guys talked about it here, right? And yes. I, I instantly tried to get the discount, but I was in Canada, so I don't think it worked for me at that time. Oh, uh, sorry. But sorry. yeah, that's all right. But I I, I just got um, a new barbecue at the end of last year. Um, I grabbed a Weber. It was on sale. Um, gas or it, getting natural gas. I installed gas. a line. Yep. Oh, so nice. it's, nice. it's, it's really good. It's the EX355, the Genesis model. So it's a really nice model. And once I got that, you know, I can grill all year long. So even through the winter, I'm grilling and stuff. And then you guys talked about this meter. So I looked it up and I was like, hmm, this looks really interesting. And I grabbed the cheapest one at the time. And my first time using it, I used it probably on some chicken. It changed my grilling. Like, <laughs> yeah, like just knowing the inside of the chicken temperature um, without having to cut it open and look at it and all that type of stuff and getting all the notifications. I love it. Yeah. It's a pretty, it's, this is this the one, this is the one I think yes. we're showing here. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, it, yeah, you know, the, I think Mark Robson is the one who kind of got me using, you know, using temp to, uh, yes. to get, you know, to, to check the, you know, while you're grilling and it does, right? There's no guessing. You're not like, oh, I don't know. It is. It's science. It is or it isn't ready to yeah. go. And um, so the the meter. Did you get? There's a there's a one you know a one probe option. There's a two probe option. There's a four probe option. What what would you pick up? So this is my advice to anybody looking to get the meter. Right. I went for the cheapest one. Don't do that. You're gonna mm. want the next model. At least get the meter plus because it will give you extended range. Um, I think it puts a repeater in the box. Yes. At least get that one and you'll be happier. I wish I got that one, but you know, I didn't think it would be this good. And I've added it to my Christmas list or, you know, various gift lists, my birthday list to maybe get the three pack if, if it's uh, available. Um, Cause sometimes I'm grilling multiple things on that that grill or somebody wants a steak this way mm -hmm. and another person wants a steak this way and i you know having multiple meters it's so worth it i i, I love it yeah the the uh the app is really good like yeah. to the it's it's simple to use it's very intuitive and now i'm i always use my my meter for big cuts of meat like a pork shoulder or I've never tried that with like a piece of chicken or you're not, I, I use my digital thermometer when I'm doing that kind of stuff to just probe around at the different pieces for you. Did you just stick it in one of them and wait to, to get to the right temperature or how, how'd yeah. you use that? Uh, yeah. I just stick it in one of them, wait till it gets the right temperature, even with my steaks. And I, I know it's just a piece of chicken, but it also like the wife loves the chicken a certain way. And this got it perfect, juicy for her and everything. Oh, you yeah. know, um, I, I didn't overcook it because, you know, I've been known to overcook it, according to her. <laughs> yeah, well, right? yeah. But yeah. but it tells you, take it off now, let it sit for five minutes. And it she she was like, that was impressive. She was impressed. So it's well worth the investment. Yeah. I think you can pick up the block. I think. I need to check on this. I think you can pick up either of the blocks, the meter plus or the, the meter block, which has four. And I think you can pair that one with those with the other ones yeah yeah to so that they'll all that you can you can basically add that in as a third or a fifth one to the block and then still use it to charge so 
you haven't you haven't you're not out anything by by buying but you're right that meter plus the block uh this weekend funny you mentioned that so this weekend i wanted to figure out how i could get a because it was connecting to my phone you know so meter to the block block to the phone phone to the web and then you could access that information from anywhere but what i really wanted is meter to block block to my android i have a fire tablet and i wanted that to be the base that would then go because that stays down here so i monkeyed around with where can i put the block in the house so that whether i'm on the grill or on the smoker i still get connectivity through the android device and then i can take my phone with me and check up on the temperatures anytime so it's pretty cool that way i assume what'd you connect what'd you use you have an android or an iphone what'd you use to I connect like- I have an iPhone, but you know, the weird part was, is when I first turned this on, my home assistant installed, picked it up and, and <laughs> really? discovered it. It said, oh. Hey, there's a meter here. And then it, you added it to home assistant. And then all of a sudden you had entities. Uh, so you can actually set automation so that when it's done cooking, it can flash your lights up for you or something like that. Like it, it was, it actually shocked me. And that's because I have a Bluetooth yeah. dongle on my home assistant setup. So, but it was yes, really cool to see that. Yeah, every time we talk, you talk about these Bluetooth integrations, and I'm like, because I'm running, I'm not running. You have it in a Docker, right? Your your a VM your, on Unraid, a VM on Unraid. Yeah, yeah. And I'm using, I'm on, I'm, I have a, a. Let's see, how am I running it? Uh, VM on Hyper V. Yes. Uh, using Windows, and Windows will not pass the Bluetooth. That's mm. the. That's what I've. We get done with the show, and I'm like, I'm going to make this work. And I even bought a Bluetooth sensor, plugged it in, did all this work. No, nope, Hyper-V doesn't pass Bluetooth. So I was like, um, so we're going to talk a little bit about Unraid here again. And again, every time we talk, I think I'm going to set up Unraid and just get this thing done, right? Because it would also be helpful for me and my GoV devices. You know, I use GoV for my hum- human stats for the cigar boxes. Those are all Bluetooth. And I'd love to bring that in. There's now a GoV uh, integration for Home Assistant. I'd love to bring all this. All right, you're gonna. We're gonna have to get this working. We're gonna have to get this fixed. I have to change my home automation setup so I can pass Bluetooth through. Because right now I'm dependent off the Bluetooth off of these devices, whether it's the phone or the Android tablet. You can. I can kind of get it done that way, but it'd really be a lot better in Home Assistant. So all right, we'll have to get that. We'll have to get that done. Well. Good on you for getting the meter uh, still available. I I, I canceled my uh, affiliate stuff with meter. So if you're thinking of buying it, just go out there and, and get it done. They, it's they're worth run, it. They, yeah, and they run deals here in the United States. They run deals all the time. So subscribe to their newsletter. Wait for their their discounts to go in and uh, and pick it up that way. Good good on you and enjoy that grill. Take good care of it. You get you got a cover for it and all that other good stuff. You, oh you get yeah, some, yeah, 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 yeah. You get all the little add-ons when you buy a new grill. You know, you get new uh, mm. grilling mitts. You get new like uh, barbecue cleaner, even barbecue cleaner spray, and new spray bottles. You get everything. You know, so it's a, a year-long thing. Uh, Alex, I missed your question. Can you use it in Home Assistant? And the answer is yes. yes. So. You have to figure that out. Oh, boy. I, uh, okay, well, thanks for coming to the show, everybody. Uh, Gavin and I got some work to do on the back. No, no, just kidding. Um, uh, Alex says, uh, could, you do, 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 could you do Bluetooth to MQTT, then bring MQTT into Home Assistant? I don't know what MQTT is. Um, I know what he's saying. I thinking about it because if you have a bluetooth dongle you don't even need to go through um mqtt it will just go straight into home assistant but i don't remember if the bluetooth actually adds it to mqtt and then imports it that way um i'd have to look that up i can't remember the route it takes but mqtt is um just a broker um if you pub things will publish messages to it and like home assistant would subscribe to those messages so when it seems Uh, like a a new temperature get posted to that server it picks it up for example that type of thing uh, maybe he was saying to me, and maybe I could do it that way since it's not passing it through. But you know what I should just do? I should just run it. I should just run it the way you're running it. We'll get it. We'll get it figured out. We'll get it figured out here. Okay. What I'm super excited about, because I've always, I have this dream, like my, my yard out front, my grass out front has, it's the tail of two cities. Uh, there's a side that faces the 
that just gets blistered all summer long. And then there's a side that's shady that just looks awesome. And I know the shady side needs a lot less water than the, the sunny side, but I mean, I could just water it, but I'm kind of, you know, we're in a, we're in a climate where, you know, Hey, water's not free. And, and I, I want to be a good steward of it. It drives me crazy when I see people watering their lawns and it's, it's running down the gutter. That drives me crazy. Right. I just, so, but I'd love to have some, I've, I've, I've been looking around and thinking about getting some sensors for the lawn where it, I just have them in there. I think full time. T- tell me you, you've been looking at some of these, sell me on these sensors because <laughs> I want to put some in the yard for sure. Yeah. Well, this year I was like you this year, I wanted to take more control over my watering schedule. So I have a ratio um, set up with, you know, my irrigation system and ratio does an all right job with knowing when it rains and stuff like that. But I just, I didn't find, I felt like it was underwatering or overwatering, no matter how much I tweaked it, because like you, my yard gets different amounts of waters based on where it is. Right. So I, I felt like it wasn't working the best way. And I wanted to know exactly, you know, where it needs water and have more control over that. So I tried a whole bunch of different water sensors, right? Um, there were ones from, uh, I had a list here, but there, there were Zigbee ones, you know, cause I have my Zigbee network out there. You know, there were Wi-Fi ones, all of them had issues because there's um, resistive or capacitive are two different types of water sensors. And sometimes you'll see them with little three little stakes in it or something like that. Right. And those ones, you know, everyone complains that they, they wear out, um, they rust over time, you know, they'll go bad. And then there's the one that looks like it's just one single flat piece of board that sticks into the ground. That's the capacitive one that everyone says is the best one. So I, you know, I eventually started looking for that one and I came across a company called echo Right. And they made this type of sensor and I gave it a shot and it communicates over. Um, yes, that's it on the screen there. It communicates over uh, RF. Right. So in North America, it uses the 412 frequency range, megahertz frequency range. So you need I needed like an SDR um, <clears throat> dongle for my home assistant so I can read stuff like that. Right. I already had one because I was reading my water meter with it. On the last show, we talked about that, right? So water meter runs at the same frequency as this. So all of a sudden, it just started picking this up too. So I was like, bonus, you know, on top of that. So I bought a few of these. I put them around my yard. I now know in different parts of my yard what the moisture is in the grass. And I've tweaked um, my watering schedule so that I know how much water I need to get it to a certain percentage. Right. So I, I like to try and keep it between 30 and 50 percent. Um, and I know like what my when it drops between 30 percent, I can run my schedule and it'll add 15 percent on there, you know, in percentage and get me to the right thing. And I don't have to water the entire lawn. The side of my house holds moisture better than the front of my house because the front of the house is in the uh, in the sun. Right. So I could just run certain zones when they need it. And I've already found that it's been saving me money, saving me water. Um, and my grass has been looking much greener this year by taking a little more control using these sensors. Okay. These sensors, like uh, when I, when I was seeing, let me, br- let me bring it back. It looks like the size of my hand when, it, when I'm looking at this thing, like, you know, when I look at this, it's like, a, it looks like a gun. Is it, it's yes. not that big, is it? It, it, it is kind of big. So this is the one downside, you know, like, um, the sensor, the black part of the sensor sticks in the ground. The mm-hmm. top part of the sensor is what sticks out of the ground. Now that right. to me was the downside because you got to watch it when you're mowing the lawn. Right. You got to mow the mow around them. I, you could trim them afterwards, right? Like they could handle a trimmer, right? But yeah. you also got to not step on them, right? Because right. if you step oh, on them, I they'll break. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And I trust me, it. I know twice. <laughs> I've got to do twice. So I have a few backups. Um, so that's the only downside to these, but they work so well compared to everything else. Um, I, I saw out there that, you know, like I decided to go with it. So I have some people coming tomorrow to spray for uh, mosquitoes. And one thing I have to tell them is, Hey, look out for these sensors. Don't step on them. Right. Yeah. And same with my lawn people, you know, when they come fertilize, I have to warn them about it and stuff too. Can right? you pick them out? I mean, can you like in theory, could I take them out of the lawn, set them aside, mow, then put them back? I was doing that at first, but I found they were like, 
it's a weak point where the the black piece is right okay. so yeah. pulling them out and putting them back in you're prone to break it you know over time right hmm. um so i just okay. leave them in the lawn i mow around it i trim it after um yeah. you don't need a lot of them just in each zone you kind of get an idea um but like i said like the extra bit that I have to mow around them, I love them having that information so well, and they work yeah. so well, especially yeah. sending information from outside my house in the yard and getting it back to my home assistant. Like right. the the frequency, it just picks it up. What's the range on these things, general? Um, mine are <laughs> they're pretty far. <laughs> well, it says I think outdoor. It says here on this graphic a three hundred foot wireless yeah. transmission. And that's based upon, uh, you know, like fins, yeah, yeah. walls, cement, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, you can also get a station. Like they have the one you're looking at it comes with a single station, but you could just buy the sensor itself. Okay. Like for me, I just bought the sensor my, itself. For, it's 22 bucks on your screen right there, yep. right? Um, yep. And that's, I used my SDR, right? But if you really wanted to, you could get a full equal with station that allows you to add up to eight devices. And then you can somehow tie that into home assistant. But I also found that that only supported eight devices. So that was kind of a limit for me where I have more than that in terms of not just these sensors, but I have some other sensors too, right? Tied into home assistant through the same company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like it. I like it. Yeah. I, 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 I you know, it's one of those, I don't, I have not put in irrigation, so I'm still a hand watering kind of guy, but it would, I would love to have a couple out front. I don't, I don't even know if I need the full eight, but a couple out front and a couple in the back just to kind of keep tabs on the general, you know, kind of the general soil. And then I, I imagine you could set up some alerts and such to say, Hey, you know, or, or to watch it and say, okay, we're down to this. So like, do you have a percentage that you you kind of follow that then you water? What's, what have you found works for you? Um, right now I have it notify me. Home assistant will send me a notification that, Hey, you've dropped below 30% in this zone. Okay. Right. And at that point I press a button and it now schedules that zone for the morning. Right. And then same with like, if another zone were to drop, you know, during that same day, I press the button for that zone and it adds it to that schedule for the next morning. And then that schedule the next morning is automatically set up. So that finishes right before sunrise. Could, right? could you just set that to be completely automated when it hits 30, just schedule itself for the next day without you having to make the decision? Yep. I, I, I haven't yeah. gotten that far yet. Um, You're still I, like pushing I, the buttons. Don't you? Yeah. I'm still yeah, pushing yeah. the buttons and keeping <laughs> the control over it for a bit still, you know, yeah. just because if you had two in one zone, one may read lower than the other one. So you kind of want to get the average of the zone too, which I, I was going to work on, but um, I still like just pushing the button and saying, okay, I'm going to water this piece and this piece. Now um, I don't trust these things um, for watering until they reach a certain percentage. Um, uh, I would not recommend doing that only because they may not report frequently or the report may miss a report or I've had, I've seen horror stories of the other ones where they actually broke during a watering and it just didn't stop watering for days. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't do that. I would more do it to judge, you know, if I run this for 50 minutes in this zone, how many percentage does it get me up to? Mm -hmm. And then you get an idea of more, a better idea of when you need water and how much water yeah. you're going to need. Yeah. Yeah. Is this their first version? Is this device their first version of it? Um, do you know, or is this something they've been working on for a while? Cause like, like I said, I, I, I love the idea. It's the design. Like I'm going to hit, I'm going to break them for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I felt that same way too, but I've tested a whole bunch. A lot of them seem to okay. stick out of the ground. Okay. Right. Yeah. Like that. Right. A lot of them do. Now I'm watching one company right now that's testing. I think they're called geo drops. Right. Um, and they're testing a similar type of sensor right now. It's in beta, um, but it sits flat on the ground. Ooh, yeah. Let me bring it up here. Let's add that, that to yes. the screen. Yeah. See that, uh, that's kind of my, that's kind of my speed. Yeah, right I've been watching them. I'm, uh, you know, watching the conversations in the Facebook group and stuff like that about these because they got it out to the beta testers. Yeah, I applied to try and get on the beta list, but 
Uh, I didn't make it in time, but these are kind of what I ultimately want is something that sits flat that I don't have to worry mm-hmm, about. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, there was very little out there. Right. Because we also, uh, the other requirements, I didn't want to run wires. I wanted something battery operated too. Mm-hmm. Right. And then it had to be able to reach inside my home too, back to my home assistant. So, do they have wired versions? Um, you can get wired versions uh, okay. of water sensors where you can hook yep. it up to your irrigation system, yep. and then you can actually bury it more into the ground out of right. the way. Right. Um, I didn't want to get into that. Um, I'm afraid that if I dig anywhere in my lawn, I'm going to hit one of the water lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've been watching this company. So if this company, you know, I don't know when it will be released. Um, I don't know how well it will work, but if they work out all the bugs and stuff like this, their form factor is pretty much what I want. Yeah, I do. I like that form factor. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's fair. You know, we, um, I had for a while, I was in a battle with the moles and actually just today I went out one, one made a big, you know, a big pile of dirt out there. And I was like, Oh, you, and I've kind of I've kind of figured out if I just rake the dirt it, back into the grass and just let them run in the holes, they're fine. They're fine, right? You know. So, um, uh, so I bought those I bought those stakes that have batteries in them, and you jam them in the ground, and then they you know they they don't work, but they yeah. make a sound, whatever. And um, and that's from a water sensor standpoint. That's kind of what I'd you know what I'd like to see is I can get it in the ground, so. I can go over it with the mower and and yeah. not worry about it. Yeah. Well, it with these, there's a few spots in my lawn I could probably put it where it's on the edge of something or near something else, and then I can just trim around it. If yeah. like like you said, you could just kind of trim around it. Well, twenty. So basically, here U.S. twenty. Let's say it's twenty three dollars a uh, a sensor, and then if you're at some point, you get either you're going to need to buy the the monitor for it that supports up to eight, right? Yeah. Yeah. And or and or connected to home assistant. Yeah, you'll have to buy the and SDR the for it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 That's about 40 mm-hmm. bucks, I think, US or okay. something like that. Okay. So it's yeah. relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Where do you have where do you have your your radio? Like so your is your box down like downstairs in a basement? Is it upstairs where it's got better access to some of those kinds of things. How's that? How's that working? Well, my home assistant actually is uh, running on my Unrate server. My Unrate server sits in the front corner of my house, mm. right? So it's in the basement. The antenna is just on the top of my rack, um, and surprisingly, that antenna picks up a lot of things, okay. right? It's picking up weather stations in the area. It's picking up all my neighbors' water meters. I think I have about <laughs> I have twenty water meters reporting into it. Um, <laughs> And it picks up all these sensors really easily. Like it has okay. no issues. Yeah. I think we talked about that last time and you're like knocking on the neighbor's door. Hey, you have a, you have a water leak somewhere in your house. I don't know how I know, but I just, I'm, I'm sensing that you do. You might want to look into it, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah. Well, okay. That's that you, you're, you've got me intrigued. I may have to give those a try. Cause I, I really don't. The backyard's just fine. It's shaded, and I really don't yeah. struggle back there. But the front, I'd really like to get some, because it's all lawn, right yeah. in front. I'd like to get some control. I have to give those a try. You've also, um, you've also got an, <laughs> ironically, picked you picked up an air sensor indicator that right that air quality is. What's that? Oh, before we get into the air sensor, yeah. let, let, yeah. it's the Echo Wit. I also got a soil temperature sensor with them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they don't just make just this, right? They also have a soil temperature sensor. So, mm-hmm. again, it runs on the same frequency and everything like that. And I know some people like to know the temperature of their soil for um, mm-hmm. uh, seeding their lawns and stuff Germination. Like that. Yep, yeah, for germination. Yeah, this is purposes. perfect for that. Yeah. So I grabbed one of those, and it, it gives me some good value there. And they also make uh, water temperature sensors. So I use one of them actually in my pool um, and it gives me the temperature in my pool. And I've compared that mm. temperature to what it says on the ladder, um, you know, one mm-hmm. that you have to mm-hmm. actually look at and mm-hmm. they're dead on. It's mm. dead on. And it's just a, lo- it's just a little piece I put on the ladder and a little cable that goes into the water. It measures it and they work really well. And again, they all, the signal reaches the basement, you know, where my server is mm-hmm. in the basement. 
So how's that? How's that water temperature powered? Is it just a bat battery? Battery like as watch well. batteries. The watch yep. battery. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think it's is it a double A or something like that? Maybe a double okay. A battery. Um. Yeah. And it, it comes with attachments, so you can attach it to a pole or you can attach it to the ladder or something like that. So, you know, if you want to put it in the skimmer and hide it away, you could do that too. So some people, you know, hopefully I give them some ideas. Yeah, no, I want them to have like solar on there because they're outside all the time, right? Yes, yeah. Why can't they have just a little solar thing on there that would keep them, you know, keep them charged for a while? Uh, they and last they last a long time, though. Up here, yeah, our yeah. summer is so short, too, so I'll be taking them out in a few months anyway. Just yeah, you'll take out all the... You'll take out all the uh, the the lawn stuff too, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no. You know get, that's got me thinking. And we started with the conversation with the meter, and as we were talking about these sensors for your lawn, you know, uh, when I'm cooking chicken or when I'm when I'm cooking burgers, I just use the inst the the instant, you know, the the yeah. the thermometer, right? Instant measure. Why couldn't they have one of those for your lawn? Or if you go out and you want to measure temperature and and uh, you know, how, moisture, moisture levels. Yeah, you just take this thing out and stick it in, and it'll tell you on the end, stick it in another spot. And then you could make that same decision. Yeah, yeah, you can't. Uh, they actually yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> do they? <laughs> do they actually do. <laughs> you know, I was waiting for you to pause for a sec, but they actually do. You could buy them on Amazon. They're relatively cheap, too, and you just stick them in the ground, and it will say if it's how moist it is or, you know, whatever you yeah, want, the temperature, yeah. et cetera. They yeah. have it. But, Maybe I'll start with one of those and and uh, go out there and just because I like to poke around and measure, you know, yeah. kind of see, see see where things are at, and then learn that, and then think about because I, yeah, I might even, yeah, I don't know. Uh, as we look at these, I may, I'd love to put some sensors in the ground, even that are wired, that I don't have to monkey around with the batteries. Yep. You know, that batteries kind of last deal. a long time on these things, apparently, too. So that's I know. A good thing. I know, but it never seems like we say that's like LED light bulbs, and they're like, "Oh, you're supposed to last ten years." Then no, 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 I haven't had a single one last ten years. That's not, it's not true. So you never know. Yeah, and and uh, and Ralph says uh, soil nutrients level too, right? Um, how many nutrients? Have you seen yeah. anything like that? No, they, I haven't been yeah. looking for that, but I'm yeah. pretty sure in the industrial space they have that stuff. Yeah, like when. I, when I was looking at this stuff, I started getting into the LoRaWAN sensors and stuff like that. And that started getting into $150 per sensor. Um, but they measured all sorts of things. And if you want stuff like that, it's going to get a little expensive. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. No, uh, you say you're going to send me down a rabbit hole. Okay. What about this air quality sensor that you've been, you've been using too? So I picked up one of the Quara air quality sensors. I grabbed that probably last year and it's been sitting here in my office and saying, yeah, your air quality is great, you know, for the longest time. And I kind of always looked at the thing saying, Hey, um, does this thing actually work? You know, is it worth it? And then we got the fires, the smoke rolled in and it just went crazy. And at first I was like, it works. You know, I was actually like, it's actually working. It's warning me now that we have bad air up here. So, um, it's actually good to see in the in the house, you know, the air quality. Um, you can actually sometimes you can actually feel it, you know, you, when you're breathing when it gets really bad. Um, so I'm probably going to grab another one just you know to put downstairs. And it, I've never I've never really watched air quality until we had these fires. Mm -hmm. Right, and now it's mm -hmm. kind of like you know in the back of my head it's like okay we're going to go play golf it's going to be hot and what's the air quality today. You know, I never really thought about that till yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, uh, you, you buy these things and then you think, um, they, they're you know, like, does this actually work? Cause it never, it never goes off, you know, you're like, and then you forget about it. And then one day it actually is like, oh, Hey, your air quality is bad. Yeah. Like really bad. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's cool. How much are those? Uh, I think this one's about 50 bucks, uh, okay. and that's Canadian. So I think it's probably cheaper. So it's $3 there. in, yeah, in exactly. the US. In the US exactly. Term. Yeah. And it works giving them away here. <laughs> it works on Zigbee. So I added it to my home assistant. So I did add some automation so that when my, when my air quality hits certain levels, it sends me a notification saying, Hey, air quality is now at this level, you know, type of stuff. Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, it's a good, do, do you like, besides the scenario you guys are in right now with the forest fires, 
what what else were you thinking from an air quality standpoint? What were you looking for, or why why did you put it in the first place? I wasn't really looking for. I don't know what I was looking for. It also measures temperature and stuff, so I kind of okay. saw it and I was like, let me see, because at that time everybody was talking about air quality sensors and <laughs> and purifiers and stuff. So I was like. Let me just see what this is about. Let me just grab one, see what my house says. And when I got it, it gave me, it measured it in like five leaves. So it said, you got five leaves, you're clean, your air is all great. And it's at this level, you know, and it just sat there like that for the longest time. Now yeah. it's sitting at three leaves, but it, it dropped down to one leaf at one point. And I could see the graphs. Like when I looked at the graphs in Home Assistant, you saw the day the fire smoke rolled in, you mm -hmm. saw that just spike up. And it took, it, it dropped a little bit and just kept going up and up and up. And it's still fluctuating today. Like it's slowly coming back down, but it's taking a while for it to go away. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, do those have to be cleaned on a regular basis? Do they have, I mean, if they're measuring particles, does that, do those particles eventually jam up the sensors? Do they have to clean them at all? I would think they might have to be cleaned. I never saw that in the mm. manual, but every now yeah. and then when I'm vacuuming, I'll just take the little vacuum or duster and, you know, yeah. Just yeah. Blow it yeah out, you you kind of wonder what the life of those sensors are. Yeah. Can't be, can't be a very big sensor. No, it's a small you know. sensor. Yeah. 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 Well, no, that's cool that, that you can, that, you know, again, that moment when you're like, Oh, this thing actually, this thing yeah. actually works. You know, if you, if you're talking about air quality, um, so no other, you know, from, uh, I was trying to think of what else besides that would cause, I guess, smog in some cities and some of those kinds of things. It may be good to know what you're, what you're up against from an air quality standpoint. Yep. You know? And, and so. one thing to consider is when I first got it, it, it would drop from five to four, you know, every now and then. And I did not know why, um, people mentioned if it was in a room over the kitchen, you could have been cooking that could cause it to, to, to drop a little bit too. You know, you got to take that into consideration as well. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done any connected, um, like a uh, fire alarms, uh, you know, uh, radon detectors? Have you, have you, you done any work on it, on any of those where those are connected into? Yep. So my fire alarms actually are, uh, first alert and okay. they're Z waves, um, um, alarms. So they work, <laughs> they work the same way as a regular fire alarm, right? Like the, by law, they have to work like a regular fire alarm, yeah. but they add in the extra Z-Wave communication to, um, you know, you can have it tied into, again, home assistance. So if something were to happen, you can have other automations uh, kick in, like doors unlocking, you know, stuff like that, right? Or you could have the fan turn on in the, the furnace or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. th there's various things people do. But yeah, I, my all my um, fire alarms are connected. Um, if you have, they're all battery powered. Um, if you're in a house that has hardwired ones, um, I think Zoos was it recently re released um, a connectivity kit that would basically allow, uh, get you into the Z-Wave space with those hardwired yeah. ones yeah. by monitoring the signal line, basically. It will know and send off the signal. So you can yeah. look into doing something like that. They're, they're out there. The packages are out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy to start thinking. And then like I always put these things in and then about the time I forget how they work is when something goes wrong with them. And then you got to like, okay, how did this thing work? Yeah. Like, where, what's this? Where's this at? What? I, I forgot it was even here now. Like, you know, smoke detector, you want to make sure that's working regardless, like right? That that's going to go off and a lot, it's not dependent on you. Um, I guess some batteries could matter. Uh, Brian says knowledge of air quality is definitely something that people seem to be paying attention to a lot more in the last few totally years, something agree. that will have a positive effect based on actions taken. That's true. Um, um, you know, and think about, yeah, just kind of knowing like, Oh yeah, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do this or, you know, whatever for better air quality. You had mentioned this idea of matter. Uh, and, and I know matter is, you know, stuff that's in the air, but what are you, what are you talking about when you say matter? Um, matter is the new smart home standard that you know all everybody's talking about now um it's well. basically yeah <laughs> we're, I, i'm probably gonna butcher it um but I, i'll try to explain it but it, it's like a communication standard like an onboarding and communication standard that sits on top of another protocol that they call thread or it can work over wi-fi right those are the two big things but it uses bluetooth to help onboard products um 
you'll see more and more products coming out. They'll either one have matter built into it or two promise matter in the future. Never buy a product based on promises. Trust me. <laughs> We've already seen a few companies back out now, such as Wemo saying, Hey, we're not, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to rethink this matter thing. Um, it, it was, it was the coming together of all the big companies, Apple, Amazon, Google, etc., coming together, trying to make a standard, but over time, and I I was predicting this. They're, they're they're butchering it in a way. Like it's becoming, it's becoming kind of a mess, right? Um, I'm starting to see products come out where it will. They say it's Matter certified, and it may do something. It may partially work on Matter in the other ecosystems, but if you add it to like Apple HomeKit, for example, you get all the features, you know. And that's how they're kind of protecting themselves. So I'm not a fan of the Matter. I actually today just picked up my first matter over thread device. Um, and you know, like a couple hours ago, I was trying to add it to my Apple home. No luck. I was trying to add it to my Alexa, no luck. So I'm going to play around with my home assistant sky connect, which is a matter controller and see what happens. But, um, it, it really needs to be, it needs a few years to iron out all the bugs and, and, and get everything going. But I'm already seeing where people are, you know, creating their little silos in the matter ecosystem. And yeah. I'm not liking that. Yeah. Well, we saw that a little bit with lighting. Uh, I think you guys recently on a home tech podcast talked about Philips and Wiz. Did I get yes. that? Is that, is that yeah. right? And yeah. is, do they say Wiz? Is that the name yes, of it? It's Wiz. Yeah. yeah. Who's, who's behind that? Um, I you can't know? remember. I think that are they their own company. Cause uh, Sarah just picked up my wife, just picked up a whiz light bulb and said, can I, can I install this in the house? And I'm like, she's like, it says it's Alexa enabled. And I was like, yeah, but that's another app to, yes. <laughs> it's like, that's another app to, did you guys like it, at this point? So I have some Phillips, I have some regular, just Wi-Fi ones. I mean, cause I just been picking them up as I go. Phillips are like a thousand dollars seems like. So I've been avoiding Phillips. Should I just begin to to use Wiz light bulbs? I think they're sold at Walmart, so I think they're the cheap ones, right? Any any advice there on the light bulbs? Um, I, I just find when it comes to light bulbs, one the company may either go out of business and you'll be stuck, you know, trying to find more light bulbs, and then you'll have two apps now, right? Or you know, like it, I just whenever I look for a product, a smart product for my house, I first check to see will it work with Home Assistant. You know, and will it be local? And if it's not local, I, I'm way the pros and cons of, you know, if it needs a cloud or stuff like that. Right. But for light bulbs, I don't have colored light bulbs in my house. I do have some just regular white light bulbs that I automate in the basement. Mm -hmm. And it's only down there because when I turn on the switch, it'll just turn on all the lights down there. Right. And I just like right. it like that. Right. Yeah. But the reason why I don't like the smart light bulbs is because then you got to start worrying about the switch. Right. right. <clears throat> um, you can get around that if you had a smart switch. Right. So some of the smart switches have like smart bulb mode where you can actually disconnect the, the, the load on it and then have it automated. So when you press up on the switch, it'll actually turn on the bulb, but it never cuts the power to it. <laughs> right, right. 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 So you could do it right. that way. But some people yeah. love light bulbs because of they like setting the colors. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But to yeah. me, the frustration for something that I may not use often, I don't, I don't yeah. see it there. So I just, I'm yeah. an all smart switch guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't want to do any switches. I, I'm going to go all bulbs in what we do. <laughs> and I, I guess now that I'm thinking about this, she bought it and I gave her the, uh, like, yeah. now I'm going to have to do another app. And then I was thinking, well, I don't know. Maybe it's time because I'm all, we're all white lights too. Like, I haven't done any colored bulbs yet and we yeah. we do the dimming ones and you know we the front door light comes up 50 percent at sunset uh, when we had a cat that had a litter box down here it would come on at night for the cat automatically um i've got a couple switches that i use for like the studio lights here where i can just say hey a lady turn on the studio lights Christmas tree is definitely its own. This year, I finally bought a dedicated one and wrote Christmas tree. Do not use for <laughs> anything else. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Finally, you know, I took your advice and it's in the box. It's off. It's killing me that it's just sitting in the Christmas tree box doing nothing. But, um, but you know, maybe she, she has been bugging me about light temperature for the longest time. She doesn't like the temperature that's in there. And I think one of those things that those lights would give us is the ability to kind of, for me, 
to set the temp exactly the way she wants it. Yeah. And then leave it right at that point. Yeah. So I don't know. My, could, Wiz could do that for me, right? Those lights aren't terribly expensive. It just means I'd go on the Wiz app if I started replacing the other lights with Wiz enabled, right? That, it, is that it yeah. maybe not all bulbs will do that you want to check the bulb like yeah. even wiz yeah. would have some bulbs that do it and some that yeah. don't yeah, yeah. um and if it works with uh, amazon right then that would be your essential thing anytime you buy bulbs just make sure it works with amazon and then you can have the automations sure. all work together yeah. so you can have like contact sensors trigger the bulbs or something like that right yeah so as long as you know you keep the hub you know central kdj says i'm just smart enough to use regular light bulbs <laughs> For regular lighting. Yeah. Well, Katie J, uh, you know, you listen to this show, so you maybe get one, start with one. Brian says, love using the, uh, the RGB lights for holidays and sport teams themes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if I'm going to go that route, like our living room is all standing lights. We don't have any lights on the ceiling except, and then the dining room has a, a light over the dining room. So we've got some options with that. There's some things I could do to make that pretty cool with the different lighting options. So, well, do I do lawn first or do I do lighting first? Uh, I don't know. Hey, talk to me uh, before we run out, we get too late on this thing. Uh, we've had a lot in the past. We've had a lot of folks who care a lot about Unraid. We haven't talked about it much. Every time you're on, we bring it up. We've had the guys from, from, uh, from Lime, Lime, Lime Wire? No, Lime, Lime Tech. Lime Tech yeah. on before John has come on. But I know they had a big update here. Uh, what's going on in the world of rate? Uh, they just released uh, 6.12. Um, and th it was a lot of under the hood stuff, security fixes, small features here and there. But they really, really pushed the ZFS support that they added, right? Um, that was seemed Americans, that's ZFS. If, just Sorry. so the Americans know <laughs> what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they really added that and they were really pushing that hard. And a lot of people, you know, were looking forward to that. Me personally, I'm not, I didn't see any need for that. It seemed like it required a little more memory. And I was looking at, you know, why you would want to use ZFS, right? Like, you know, I saw some of the use cases, just none of them really applied to me, right? But if you're a power user, you may really like this. Um, some of the, most, the power users are really talking about this. But either way, always make sure your Unraid's up to date. You know, it, it, it's got security updates, patches, things work better, things run faster. Just, just always stay up to date. Yeah, it's a it's a big update. They've been talking about this for a long time. Yeah. I go in and out with... Um, uh, with Unraid, I was making some changes down here in the studio just this week with the the U Green power generator went back and the new Blue Eddy came in today and it, of course that always messed up some stuff. The U Green was clicking off at least once a day and so everything was shutting down on you know <laughs> without warning, which is never good, right? Yeah. And the uh, Moro data box that I keep that's kind of the box I keep down here for all of my files and that it backs them up to Backblaze, um, uh, I couldn't come back online. And I thought, oh, crap, did the power outage wipe out that? It's a little Intel nook. I thought maybe that got wiped out in a in one of the pa power going down. Well, it turns out it had an IP conflict, and I was able to bring it right back up. So it was fine. But it got me thinking, like, you know, this thing's not going to last forever. Maybe it's <laughs> Maybe it's time to put Unraid back in and move some storage over to it. I need, I don't know, I need about four terabytes. I mean, that's for, for all the podcast stuff that we do. I think my Backblaze backup is that. Um, but it, the Moro data box is just a terabyte, so it only caches 700 gig. So I only have 700 gig on premise. If it needs it, it goes and grabs it and gets it back. But I've, I don't know, I, I've often thought, well, you know, I better have a backup plan and uh, maybe Unraid. Maybe it's time to think about Unraid again so I can do this pass through with Bluetooth and get that rolling in a radio controller. Still, um, uh, although with the changes that are going on in Unraid, that used to be able, you could do that for free. There's, it's, is there a cost now to, to, for Unraid if I was just going to run that in a basic configuration? Doesn't it, isn't it based on hard drives or something? Um, yeah, it's based on the number of hard drives you can add. And they, they have, I, I usually, cause I, 
I'm so invested in them. Yeah, I just paid yeah, yeah. their maximum um, yeah. to support them and stuff like that. I even have a second Unraid box that's just used for backups. Um, and I bought a full license just for that. You know, what's you how much know. is that? What's a full license? Um, I'd have to look it up. It's pr- been a while since I've been using it for many years, and yeah. the price yeah. has probably gone up. Um, Hi, everything's and, gone up. Everything's yeah. gone up. <laughs> Yeah. But it's uh, da, da, you can get a trial. Uh, what's the price? Buy now. Is this so for the basics fifty nine dollars for the plus is eighty nine, which is a year. To, yeah. Well, yeah. no, it's uh, oh. lifetime. Oh, and okay. That, that's up to twelve uh, devices, or you could go with the pro, which is one hundred and thirty, and that's unlimited. Okay. Right, so okay. I just I just bought the pro. I supported yeah. them. Uh, yeah. I use them way too much. My Unraid, I have everything running on one Unraid box, right? And it's kind of scary because whenever I have to reboot it, it takes down like my whole house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you that's know? yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. so I, I'm, I'm yeah. now thinking maybe I should split split it between two Unraid boxes, you know, yeah. and then I can reboot one and still keep some stuff working. Yeah, that's the thing. You 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 think consolidation, you know, you're like, okay, I could get all this on one thing, and that's going to be awesome. It's all in one place. Yeah, until that thing reboots, and then the you know, hey, the internet's not working or whatever, yeah. right? You know, you know how that goes. Um, is your Unraid on fairly new equipment, or I like? It used to be we'd always put Unraid on, you know, you'd get just something because it was pretty light. It didn't require a ton, right? So you could yeah. run on older equipment. Do you have it running on fairly older equipment or fairly new or how, how do you approach that? Um, my equipment's actually really old. I think it's 2012. Um, it's a Precision T3610 or something like that, right? Um, I paid like 200 bucks for it. And then later on, I actually upgraded the chip in it. Um, I put a, a newer Xeon chip in it with more threads. Um, it's still from like 2012, but now I have like, I think it's a 12 core, 24 thread, and I can run certain things on certain cores so that they don't interfere with each other. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that it's all old equipment, but it works perfectly. Yeah. Right. And yeah, yeah. you know, the case is great because I have two video cards in there. Um, they both do one video cards used for AI processing and the other ones used for, um, displaying video at one of my VMs, you know, so it's, it's worth, you know, you don't need new equipment. I know some people that will splurge and spend tons of money on a new Unraid server. I'm the type of guy where I'm like, I can get a 12 year old server Mm -hmm. and it just, you know, if you know how to use their cores properly, it just works well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I, I think I have an eight year old or a nine year old box. That's a core I seven third, maybe second or third gen. Yeah. Like it's, it's an early box. So, um, no, no video cards in it, but I could, I could probably pick up a, a fairly inexpensive one for some of those processing. The plan was when I built the gaming rig, I was going to turn that into an unraid box and then I just never did it. And, uh, and so, yeah, maybe that's the, it literally does nothing. It, I've got, um, it, it shows the cameras for, uh, for my, um, ring cams and I've got a analytics. I have a Google analytics window open, always showing what's going on on my website. (laughs) I'm running a whole PC for two windows. Like it's pretty, (laughs) pretty dumb. Well, you gotta get some VM set up on there and throw a home assistant, make it run off of there. Yeah, um, what's well, running? That's the box it is running on. It's just oh, running in the Windows. Uh, so oh. I would basically put Unraid on it and then run Home Assistant off of Unraid, right? Because yeah. then I could pass through the. It's gonna need. I don't think it has Bluetooth natively, so I need to get a Bluetooth dongle. Yeah, for it. But that those are pretty cheap. Yeah, those are pretty cheap. Yeah. Well, thanks, Gavin. Thanks for. <laughs> Thanks for making me spend. Um, hey, did you, you did you find a new photo hosting app for that as well? Are you you doing something different with your photos? Yeah, so you know, like I've been I've been constantly looking around for a way to manage photos, and it's just something that to meet our requirements and how I want to manage the photos and what works yeah. for us. You know, everyone has something different, but um, I came across one called Image I M M I C H. Right. Um, and it's being highly developed, like they're moving fast, updates constantly, but they've added a lot of features. It's got an iOS app, 
Um, I have it running in a Docker. It's got like GPU support. Um, it's what really shocked me is when I first installed it and then I added my library to it, all, the face detection, mm. you know, like that's one of the things I really wanted was to see, you know, I could click on someone's face and it shows me all the pictures for them. It does all that. And it's built in at once. I was shocked at how well that worked. Right. So it's almost perfect for me, but it's just enough. Right. That now I can switch to it and they're adding new features and I see the conversations going on in their discord and everything they're talking about. I'm like, yes, that's what I want to you. Right. So <laughs> if you're looking for one, check this one out. It's really good. I, uh, let's see again. I M M I C H dot app. If you want to check that out and, uh, you're, you're pulling a little weaker on this one. Cause he, he was always, yeah, he had kids. So he was yes. always trying to find the perfect photo app. I'm sure Hannah was putting pressure on him. Like, and you can't lose these things. I, I, I take so few pictures. Like it's, I think during the pandemic, yeah, I was walking a lot during the pandemic. I took more pictures of gravestones than because we were walking yes. through the cemetery. <laughs> then I took it that sunsets and cigars, like the grave, grave stones, sunsets and cigars. Those are, that's my whole phone. Those are all my, like, you know, and made a selfie with my granddaughter every once in a while. So I, I don't, for me, I, I, I ask this question a lot. I'm like, do I, do I really need to do something with my photos? They're on Facebook. The ones I care about are on Facebook, but that's, that's not a permanent solution. And then I'm like, am I going to care? Am I going to get, you know, when my mom passed away, we had boxes and boxes and boxes of old photos and we went through them and somebody's like, we ought to digitize these. And we just threw them away. <laughs> At the end, you know, you're like, eh, so much work. So I don't you know, know. One of the features know. I like of something like Google Photos and stuff, or even Apple, when it does like this day five years yeah. ago, yeah, or yeah, it yeah, creates yeah. memories. Yeah. Image does that actually. It it has that built in. And I did not even know this, but then it started showing up on the app and it said this day seven years ago, and it would create a montage. And I love seeing those because yeah. You don't yeah. have to go scrolling back through all those photos to see yeah. memories where it kind of brings it to you and says, Hey, yep. do you remember this? And yeah. I love that. Yeah. Both my mother-in-law and my, my, um, uh, my, my wife's sister, sister-in-law, um, they, they've got those photo frames and they, they, you know, it's got an email address and the kids send pictures into it. That's really the way to like, if you're going to do this, you got to have your pictures rolling all the time so you yeah. can see them, right? They can't be on a server somewhere, not ever to be seen. Uh, you you got to get uh, Tony Rayner, who's normally out in chat. He's, oh, he's yes. missing tonight. He Mr. on Victor. Twitter, that dude, <laughs> that dude, he's got pictures all over. He, he is, uh, he, and yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing stuff. Sometimes I wonder if he even stays at home. Like he's just always no. on the go. no. No, no. Yeah, well, and that's good. Well, he, but he works really hard, you know, in the hospital for yes. uh, eight days in a row, whatever. Then they give him a bunch of days off. He, he is good about separating those things out. So Tony, Tony, good work. Before I talk about the U green, uh, uh, change over to blue Yeti for solar generators, anything else, Gavin, that's coming up for you, uh, as we think about what you're looking ahead towards, uh, besides, uh, clearer skies in winter, maybe. <laughs> yeah, a couple of things I'm looking at playing with. I'm looking to jump into the 3D printing thing. I kind of got the bug. I saw some for sale on Marketplace, and I'm probably going to make a grab one hopefully this weekend. Um, I have some use cases that I wanted it for, so yeah. I'm like... Uh, Maybe some protective covers for those moisture sensors. sensors. <laughs> exactly, you know, or some little like yeah. pylons yeah. you could put next to them or something. Uh -huh. But uh, <laughs> um, I, I was looking at jumping into 3D printing, and then I've been playing around with esp32 these are these little micro boards right um so you can make it's almost like really do it yourself so you can make your own sensors out of it right so you could make your own soil moisture sensors i'm basically uh looking to grab to build um one to measure the pressure in my pool filter Oh, right. Oh, yeah. So, That'd, be good. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. So uh, I noticed yeah. there wasn't a device out there that I could uh, automate that I could find for a relatively good price. So I'm like, I'm just going to build one. So like you get this little micro board and it's a little soldering. You buy the sensors, you, a little programming, and it integrates right into Home Assistant. So I've been looking at playing around with a lot of these and it's relatively cheap too. What, what's relative? Um, I think I paid 15 bucks for the actual chip. Oh. 
Wow. And then the sensor cost me maybe 20 bucks for the pressure sensor, the water okay. pressure sensor. Yeah. So yeah. then you put that together, you buy a little box, maybe 30, 35 bucks. I got the whole thing put together. Yeah. Yeah. The, these little boards are getting so good. Yes. So many things you could do with them. Yeah. I, yeah. I saw pe- what people were doing out there with them. And I'm like, oh, I, I really want to get into that. It, it's a learning curve. I saw somebody make a remote control with one, um, uh, like almost like a Logitech Harmony replacement. Yeah. And he had yeah. a whole circuit board and the chip on it, and he 3D printed the case for it, and it looks amazing. And uh, I got the bug. Yeah, no, right on. I just bought one of those little uh, power sensors, you know, you can, and I forget the the, uh, the number on it, but it, it basically comes in a case, got an LCD screen on top and then a board on the bottom. It it takes the it has an input for power, so you feed uh, uh, you know uh, regular your, your home power into two of the things, and then it comes with a clamp that goes around your uh, whatever you want to measure, right? It goes around that in, and uh, then plugs into the other two ports, and then it'll measure voltage and amps and yes. all that stuff that's going through it, right? I wanted to I I had this set up for the generator coming in the house for when we lose power. Because I wanted to monitor that as we were running it. I wanted to know how much am I using so I know how much I can let the neighbors grab, you know, uh, uh, during those kinds of outages and such. And I, I totally smoked the first box. I put the wrong <laughs> I put the wrong uh, leads in, just smoked it. Would never work again. So we tossed it, ordered another one from Amazon and came in. Yeah, 20 bucks. Yeah. And got that installed today. And when I took it apart after I smoked it, when I took it apart, it's one of these boards. Like it's just... One of these boards with some special stuff soldered on it, and it just it measures the 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 electricity coming through. It's super cool, and uh, I ended up uh, uh, bringing it out of the box, uh, putting a full. So I have a two or four gang, four gang, yeah, four gang box, so a square box, drilling a little hole in it, bringing the wires out through that, and then just using command strips to tape that sensor or tape that L- L- the led lcd led screen to the to the front of it and it, yep. it works great i was gonna cut the box and pop it in i'm like that's too much work yeah, that's yeah. Too much. I'm just gonna draw tape. the line somewhere just gonna tape it to the front just gonna tape yeah. it to the front that works well th- that's cool yeah they've got uh in all I'll, uh i'll put a um a link in the show notes for these devices uh, Gavin, they've got a ton of them now. Yeah. Like all these things you can get with all this kinds of different connectivity and all these outputs. That's crazy. And, and the chip I got, oh, I can't remember the name. It's the ESP32 C3, ESP32 C3. Um, yeah, three series. They have a six series. They've got a, this one from Seed Studio. Um, it's extremely small. That mm. board is actually the size of my thumb, it's like like my yeah. thumbnail, right? And then the antenna actually plugs into it, and it's crazy how small. I didn't realize it was that small when I got it. So it, it, they're doing some amazing stuff with this. Mm. Yeah, no, super cool. Well, we'll we'll have you back in a couple months and uh, and catch up with you. See see where you've progressed with that. We'll see if I finally have an unraid server box set up by the time actually i'm gonna i'm uh, i'm gonna i say this every time i'm gonna do it this time though i'll ping you as i'm setting that up i'm like hey i've got this what dongle do i need what radio thing do i need and because i've been using the heck out of home assistant like i love home assistant it's just it doesn't i need bluetooth like i yeah. need it so i can pick up those hygrometers or those uh, hydrostats the you know the the um i've got some other things like the meter would be awesome to have that run run through that. So, okay, we got some work to do. Quick, before I let you go, quick update. Uh, chatted with you a little bit before the show, but you know the the U Green saga continues a little bit. We've been talking about this on um, in the Discord group. If you haven't joined us on Discord yet, the Average Guy TV slash Discord, just jump in to the conversation. But the U Green box on the surface looked like it was going to be everything I needed for the first couple of weeks. It was good, and then just started resetting itself. Now think of this, think like your, your computers are plugged in and they're running and then they just stop. Yeah. That's the, it's it, like a power outage. And it first, it was every couple days and then it became every day in the last couple, 
in the last week or so, every single day it would reset and, and it would, it was just doing some weird things. Now, the good news is Ugreen was awesome on support. I pinged them. They said, hey, can you send me a video? They sent me some things to try. Um, they were very responsive. They gave it a shot. At the very end, they just said, it's broken. Send it back. And we'll refund your money. It's it's uh, I, they, they didn't even offer to replace it, which makes me think maybe maybe there were some production things out to shoot with it. Good little box, great design. Loved what it's going to do. Loved the fact that it you could the had a display you could leave on all the time. The app was actually pretty good for a, v, a V1. So, but the box just didn't do the UPS pass through the way I needed it, which is to actually stay on all the time. Right? Imagine if your Unraid box was resetting every day. That would be a nightmare for you. Yeah, right? that uh, yeah. even just hard booting it sometimes is is scary yeah. when it hangs. But. Yeah, yeah, no, right on. It was now. Fortunately, I've gotten really good at bringing everything up back online. I have a, I it's I have a procedure now that I go through. Okay, turn this on, turn that on, turn this, turn that, go that, click here, get these going again, get this process happening. The uh, it's, I have a, a few things in Hyper V that just automatically come back. So I actually my network recovers really really well. It did cause me to put a separate UPS on my uh, Wi Fi uh, router for the house, right? So I have a modem coming in, a T-Mobile modem that comes in. It's on its own UPS now. So that, that, that'll make it a while. And actually it has a battery built into it, which is kind of cool. And then back here where the Wi-Fi router is, uh, the family doesn't like it when they wake up in the morning and they're like, uh, dad, there's no Wi-Fi. And you're like, oh, so I put that on its own UPS and that's staying up just fine. So when, when the box is going down, so that shipped you green shipped back today and blue, the new blue Eddy AC 180. So it's an 1800 watt inverter and 11, about 1100 watt, uh, watt hours, uh, of, of battery in there. I'm only using, uh, 600 Watts as it is. So that gives me about an hour and some change to right now to uh to get things converted over or whatever that's kind of what i wanted it for plugged it in it's charging everything's plugged into it we'll see how it goes you know you never know right and with these kinds of things you kind of hope right um same by the way same price it was seven seven ninety nine for that you know and so at the end of the day the app is kind of cool i wish i could show it it's showing i've got six hundred and 26 watts being pulled in and 626 watts being pulled out as it's passing it through. And then if I were to unplug it, it would consume all of that switch over and, uh, and run everything for the next hour or hour and some change. I'm going to be testing it this weekend to do that, just to do just that. I'll figure I'll let it run for a day or two before I do that. I just literally just unplug it and then just sit here and see what happens. Yeah. Right. So, Mo, mo, listen, mo, you said this before. Most people just run UPSs, and that's absolutely fine. I just I wanted to get into this solar generator area. I think eventually I'd love to have the battery. You know, I'd love to have solar charging batteries and at least part of my energy being used from those batteries, right? And 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 uh, but I we we the battery technology is changing so fast, and there's so many great things. It's like and the break even. It's here in Nebraska the but break even is not very good. So you kind of like, that doesn't make financial sense. Yep. You know, kind of thing. Now it will, if power prices keep going up, that'll make, although that everything goes up with it. So, so the blue Eddie is in the, it's the AC 180. If you want to look it up and a uh, uh, pretty cool, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about it. A little um, blue Eddie has been in this business. Yeah. You know, you green makes, chargers and they've been doing that a long time this was their first foray into the big devices blue eddy this is where they came from and so hopefully we'll see some good they have a great app too very, very well so a little bit of update i'll be talking about that here at the end of the show um as well gavin do you guys have anything coming up on on home tech that you want to pimp before you on the way out are there any any topics or anything do you guys plan that far in advance at all on what you're talking about or is it just week to week it's just week to week. The news, the news, um, it comes out, uh, you know, like 
maybe Monday, Tuesday, we record on Wednesday yeah. or Thursday or something like that. So it's like before the show, we finally like plan it all out. Um, most of the time, uh, you know, it's our projects that we're working on through the week. That's the only thing we'll know, you know, what to talk about in the next show. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's usually we do our prep like right before the show. <laughs> Last minute. Yeah. Uh, may, maybe a little more prep than we do. So, you know, no, it's all good. And, uh, and you know, it, it, it's um, if you if you haven't listened to it yet, head out to hometech.fm or search home tech on any podcast player and you can get that they, those guys do a nice job um, over there as well gavin thanks for saying yes we'll have you back here in a couple months and catch up with you again thanks for coming on not a problem anytime can, can you hang tight while i close things up are you okay on time or do you need to go no no i'm good I'll, I'll you've been out. at this a while i just want to make sure no you, i'm you, good, you, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You, you recorded a whole nother show before you jumped on with me but but uh, hang tight for one sec We'll um, uh, we'll remind everyone if the the average guy TV platform, both web and media hosting, powered by Maple Grove Partners, and Christian's going to be on here in three or four weeks, and so you want to come back and listen to that. Come out and join us live, but uh, get secure, reliable, high speed hosting from people that you know and you trust. You know that's Christian. Head out to and I think he still ten dollar plans. Head out to Maple Grove Partners, all one word dot com, to uh, to get that uh, to get those deals or to check that out. He'll help you do just about anything. Uh, to get that done. I mentioned the Discord group. Uh, we got a great group over there. If you want to join us, theaverageguy.tv slash Discord. How are you guys, Gavin? Do you guys have a community platform for home tech? What are you guys using? Um, we use, um, oh, what is this? Uh, of course, Slack. Sorry. Oh, yeah. So, okay. so yeah, yeah. so, um, yeah, yeah all, all our Patreons are in a Slack channel, and we have a lot of conversations going on in Slack. So, okay. you know, like... Uh, yeah become a patron you get invited to the slack channel and they're talking about everything in here That's like cool. all sorts of random topics and i'm actually shocked because sometimes you don't see a lot of people talking but there's people watching and there's some really like smart people in this channel like yeah um yeah. oh i can't remember his name but he he's like the head of outlook at microsoft like the oh. development of outlook oh. at Microsoft, and he's in there and we we were talking a couple of times about outlook but it's a really good Slack. Um, other than that, we have our hometech.social Mastodon server. Okay. So if you're looking to get on Mastodon, go to hometech.social, sign up through there. I, I'm constantly approving people because of the whole Twitter fiasco. So yeah. a lot of yeah, people yeah. are coming over. Yeah. So that's been going on too. Yep. And we're here. If you want to join the average guy TV discord, that's and it's same thing. A couple conversations a week, nothing overwhelming and nothing very technical. I mean, gadgetry kind of stuff but it's just a good group to hang out uh with the average guy.tv slash discord we are live at, and of course you can always send me an email jim at the average guy.tv we are live every thursday 8 p.m central 9 eastern out here at the average guy.tv slash live uh we got a, I mentioned christian's coming back uh but we also aaron lawrence will be here next week so you want to make sure you're here for that um and then christian on the 27th and i got randy walker scheduled right now for the third so we got some folks Lined up, and we'd love to have you in the chat room. Big thanks to Katie J, Brian, uh, Ryle, Alex, and Bob, who, and Ken, who joined us a little bit earlier. And we'll be back here next Thursday with Aaron Lawrence. She does a great job, and uh, looking forward to that as well. Thanks for coming out. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.